everyone, my name is Jenna and I am one of the bear keepers here at Houston Zoo and I'm very excited to be the one to talk to you about bears. They are one of my favorite animals on the planet. Speaking of planets, we are celebrating Earth Week this week. So every day we are highlighting a different animal or a different species. So today is our black bears. So black bears are really incredible animals. They are huge. They are one of the largest land carnivores in the United States. So bears are very formidable, amazing, incredible, sometimes intimidating animals, but they also have a really playful side as well. A lot of people don't realize that bears are extremely intelligent. They are right up there with whales and dolphins. Now, right up front here is our bear, Belle, and her sister, Willow, is along the back, kind of behind this boulder. So we get a lot of questions, well, this bear is brown. How is it a black bear? Well, black bears, despite their name, actually vary in color quite a bit. Bell and Willow hail from the West Coast in California, and it is the most common coloration for Western black bears. But as I said, they can range in so many different colorations. For instance, I am from Florida, and Eastern black bears tend to be that traditional common black color. The further west, they get lighter and a more brownish color, but there are really unique pockets of bears, mostly in the northern Canadian regions. There is even one called the glacial bear that has a lovely light blondish bluish coloration. Now, bears are in the order carnivora. They are considered carnivores, but as you can see, Belle is not munching on meat. She is munching on lots of vegetation. In fact, bears can eat between 80 to 90% of vegetation. There are eight different species of bear. And just to kind of bring that fact home, panda are considered bears as well. But they are one of the most unique and specialized species of bear that we have on this planet and 99% of their diet is vegetation. They eat bamboo. But bears are very intelligent. They are very opportunistic animals, and they are always assessing their risks or opportunities. So if they get an opportunity to, say, eat meat, whether that is carrion that they found, they are going to take that opportunity because they are carnivores, and their digestive tract will really benefit from that. Now bears look slow and lumbering now, but they are capable of running up to speeds of 35 miles per hour and sustaining that speed for quite a bit of time. 35 miles per hour doesn't seem like a whole lot, but that is quite a bit faster than us. I would not recommend trying to outrun a bear. Uh, 35 miles per hour is faster than my first car could sustain. So that is pretty incredible. Now, as you can see, Bell and Willow are foraging throughout and one of their favorite activities is foraging so bears are really unique animals in that their whole lives they are thinking about one thing and that is food so bears as we know do what's known as hibernation or torpor uh, so eight months of the year that is all they are thinking about how can i bulk up and sustain myself through the harsh winter. Now we live here in South Texas, so they are not having to prepare too, too much for those harsh temperatures, but we did experience quite a bit of a cold snap in February, so it is good for bears to prepare. Now you can see Belle and Willow are munching on lots of items. Now their favorite are going to be grapes, any berries, blueberries is a huge favorite, and as you can see, they are munching on mulberry berries. Now, bears are going to forage all the time. If you have an opportunity to visit any of the national parks, such as Glacier, you may see what looks like almost a whole herd of bears kind of foraging in the same meadow. Now, what they're doing is they're foraging for things like really high protein vegetation because even though bears for most of the time and most of the year don't eat too too much meat they still get a lot of protein from the vegetation that they seek out now other items 
Other items that they might be eating are roots, barks, uh, in, in times of hyperphagia where they are really, really eating around um, the fall months, they're going to seek out salmon as well. Now, I, we just got a question how you could tell the bears apart. Now, Belle, who is on the left, she is a bit fluffier than her sister Willow. She has longer hair. I like to call her Fluff Monster because she has a really bad case of bedhead whenever she gets up in the morning. Now, Willow is a lot smaller bear. Now, what's really neat about bears is they are highly, highly individualistic. All of our bears have different personalities as well. Now, Willow is very technical. She likes to assess and do a lot of risk taking. She likes to problem solve. One of the enrichment items we like to provide our bears are what's known as puzzle feeders. You can see one of them that's a green boomer ball with a bunch of holes in it. There are lots of goodies inside that boomer ball and they like to try to figure out how to get to the tasty treats at the center. Yeah. Belle, she is our more patient bear, shall we say. Uh, she's a bit lazy. Uh, for instance, foraging, we like to encourage that because that prompts them to be a bit more active and do exactly what we see, what we want to see our bears doing. But she will do a goofy army crawl or even roll to try to get to foods. The least amount of work possible to get the most amount of food is our girl, Belle. Willow, she is our athletic girl. Now, one of the ways that you could help uh, with fundraising for our bears is by participating in a really cool virtual fitness fundraiser known as uh, Miles for the Wild. Now, like I said, it is a virtual fitness fundraiser, but as a daily challenge, you can maybe take 10,000 steps a day. And that would be kind of cool because bears, their home range is between one to 10 miles or square miles. So by helping us protect bears, you're actually helping to protect many, many different areas or animals with, that live within that territory. Now that is a term known as an umbrella species. So bears very much are an umbrella species because by protecting bears, you're protecting a large amount of space and many, many animals within that space. Now here at Houston Zoo, we have what's known as take action initiatives. Our take action initiative that helps our bears very much is our paper and wood take action initiative. Now bears, can climb. They are incredible climbers. They can actually climb 100 feet in just 30 seconds. Woo! That is much quicker than me, I can tell you that. And that is really incredible. Uh, but by saving uh, our paper, uh, maybe even switching to reusable toilet paper or recycled toilet paper, you can help save trees. 27,000 trees a day are used to produce toilet paper worldwide, which is a huge, huge staggering number. So by helping us conserve black bears, you are helping us to ensure their healthy future and we'll be able to see bears for many generations to come. Oh, so bears love to run very fast. Now, as I said, they can run up to 35 miles per hour. And one of the funniest stories I have about Bell and Willow is this kind of caters to their personality as well. Uh, so Willow very much is our focus bear. She likes to focus and make sure that she gets all of the food or the good food items before her sister. Bell, as I said, she gets bored or lazy rather quickly and she likes to go for swims. Now just like you might say your dog at home has zoomies, every once in a while that happens to our bears as well and they will zoom around and Belle really loves to do zoomies, cannonball into one of her pools and will go chase her sister to try to get her wet which Willow hates and so it's very entertaining to be able to see our bears play and that is a huge show of how intelligent they are. The more often animals play, 
typically the more intelligent they are. Now, as you can see, Belle is walking a little bit closer to our viewing glass, and you can see that trademark bear wobble. So bears are flat-footed or plantigrade, just like we are. And so that means they use or walk on all of the surface area of their foot. And so as a result, they get that really cute booty shake or that waddle when they're walking, which is a huge trademark for a bear. Now, a lot of people ask us, how can you be bear safe whenever you go out into nature, uh, specifically uh, in bear country? One of uh, the greatest uh, tips I can give you is to just be prepared. Uh, don't ever hike alone, hike with another person. Generally, bears are going to hear and smell you way before you even see them. They smell seven times better than we can and their eyesight is about the same as us. A lot of people might misinterpret bear signals. So if you see a bear and a bear stands up, that does not mean he's going to charge or attack you. That is simply, uh, whoa, you startled me. I'm standing up to get a better look at you. Why are the black bears brown? Now, we just got a question, why are our black bears brown? As I said before, our bears vary in color quite a bit. So black bears can be found all around the United States. And depending on where they're found regionally, they are going to be a different color. So Bell and Willow are California black bears. And California black bears are most commonly going to be that brown coloration. Now, as you can see, this is Bell. She is licking honey. So a lot of people ask, do bears like honey? Yes, they do. That is one of their favorite treats. In fact, one of the favorite things for them to do is to climb up a tree and claw or get loose a bee hive. And then they will not only eat that honey, but they're going to eat the bees and the grubs. Now you can see that she is standing to get a better view of uh, that honey that she's trying to reach. She also has a lovely little white splotch on her chest and that is another way to tell Belle and Willow apart. Willow has that classic brownish coloration all along her body, whereas Belle has that really cute white splotch, which is typical for maybe about half of the bear population in the United States. Now, you can see that close up of Belle's paw. That is a very awesome paw. Now, the difference between a black bear paw and a grizzly paw is size, definitely. Grizzly or brown bears are much larger than black bears, but they have different paws and longer claws, grizzlies do, uh, in order to help make them successful with things that they need to do in order to survive. Black bears have shorter claws for climbing. As I said before, they are incredible climbers. <laughs> now here at the zoo, we also cater to Bell and Willow's healthcare. Now we do that by incorporating training. Now training is a really awesome tool to have in a zookeeper's arsenal. Now what we do is we cater that to maintenance behaviors. So by getting Bear to stand, getting Belle or Willa to stand up, you can just see how big she is, but you can also really appreciate her full body. So as zookeepers, we are checking her lower extremities, places like her stomach we might not be able to see uh, to just fully assess the health of the bear. Now, thank you all so, so much, or very much, for tuning in. Uh, please join us next Wednesday at our next Facebook Live at 11 a.m. Thank you.